Hello there. Today's episode is going to be a little different. Um, I've had some pretty amazing opportunities to build some pretty cool things for some amazing people and I've always managed to challenge myself and learn something new. But today is completely out of my wheelhouse. We're going to build a knife. This is for my pickiest client yet. Me. So a little context is going to be needed. I didn't just wake up one morning and think, hey, you know what? I need a knife. It's not what happened. Here's the thing, is I come up with some pretty cool and random ideas, but uh, making sharp, dangerous objects generally is not one of them. It all started with a phone call to my best friend Dave. We met in 1996 while serving together for UN workup training in the Canadian military. He was my section commander, and most of all, he's an all-around good guy. And he makes knives. An impressive display of my pal's talent. Now once I saw his work, I knew that I wanted to own one of those for my own. So I called him up and asked him how much it would cost to get one from him. His answer was pretty simple. Come over and make your own damn knife. So that's what I did. Now, Dave's been working on knives for quite a while. And he's been working on a new way of making a Damascus-style knife. Dave's a pretty smart guy, so you know what? I'm going to let him explain this. In the past, it seems traditionally the way to do mosaic Damascus is you have this long billet and you have a pattern here. To show the end grain, they slice and flip them all and then forge weld them back into a longer piece that they can make a knife out of. What we're going to do is going to be a little different. We're going to take the same concept. We're going to forge the blade almost in its final form with our pattern in. Of course, this comes with a little bit of science. 1090 powder, which I ordered online. And I have 1090 powder, but it has 4% nickel powder mixed into it. Right. Uh, and the nickel will uh, resist corrosion and resist etching. So when we etch our pattern later, um, anything that is not the nickel steel will go darker. Anything with the nickel in it will resist it and still stay shiny. Sounds simple enough. Let's get to work. Uh, okay, come on, empty out. Yeah, it's okay to pile on top. There's something I missed here. Those two different powdered metals, uh, the one with nickel and the one without nickel, need to be separated. And they get separated by a vase mode 3D print that we do in PLA. Now, the PLA, when it burns, creates carbon. And if anything, it helps with the forge welding that is happening here. And for those out there, I might have said Damascus at some point, and somebody's going to get all shitty about it. The reality is, is that it's not Damascus, but it is more, um, I think Dave came up with the best term. It's a 3D canister forge weld process. And this allows you to create these really amazing um, differential colors in a blade. Then once everything is in place and packed tight, it's time to seal up the mold. Let's add it to some heat. A whole ton of heat. More fire! Ha! Am I doing this right? Is it still, oh, it's still recording. Hey, I did it right this time. <laughs> Actually, it's a bit more technical than that. Come on, man. I'm just trying to make this cinematic and interesting, okay? Do it right, or don't do it at all. All right, all right. I'll let you explain it. For setting a forge weld, you just want all the heat you can, right? So we're not too worried about the color. We're just, we want it to be like a bright, almost yellow color right now, regardless. Yeah. But the most important thing is that we give it the time. So we got that color, but we want it to be that color in the center as well, which takes time. It's called soaking it. Soaking it in the heat. Yeah. There. Are you happy? Much better. Carry on. Thanks. Now where was I? <laughs> More fire! Now comes the hard work. Taking out the mold and hammering it. For the record, 
that's me doing all the hard work. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I don't want to let it cool down too much right now because we're still in the fourth boiling process. Uh, I can start hitting it when it gets cold. You're, uh, you're gonna make cracks in it. Thanks for the tip, Dave. Now it's my turn. Uh, good boy. I'm going to bring the hammer in my arm. That's right. Training wheels off. This is all you. Well, for a while anyway. It works a lot better if you put your body into it. As true as this is, I'll admit it. I'm a first timer. Eventually I had to ask Dave to take over because my arms and my hands had had enough. Moving on. The flatter we get it now, the more material we have to work with on the building machine. Ah. You gotta take off all the high spots and the low spots. Well, I notice you're also worrying about the edges. Is that like... Yeah, I just wanna keep everything kind of as level as we can, as square as we can. I mean, it ain't perfect, but I think we got a pretty good hunk of steel sitting here. With that solid sounding seal of approval, it's time to open up this mold and take a look at this piece of steel. And never forget, this is serious work. So we're going to uh, put this on the mill eventually to shave off the mild steel that's around it right. and get it down to size a little bit more, but uh, the, we're going to use carbide cutters and carbide cutters do not necessarily like cutting through the scale that we've got here, so I'm going to use the grinder. Right. Just to get through all that scale. That's super cool. But of course, to go from cool to amazing, it takes work. Time. Dedication. Did I already say work? But soon enough, a blade starts to take form. And if all that hammering wasn't enough, it's time for grinding. Grinding. Grind. Grinding. Grind. Grinding again. It's a lot. Necessary evil, my friend. But soon enough, it's over. Thank freaking God. And now we get started on some woodwork. And back to grinding. Yep. So things are getting close. What's next? More grinding. Let's get this knife sharp. Things are getting exciting. We need to acid etch off all the grease and grime and get it ready for a coffee dip to stain the metal. Let's clean the gunk off this blade and take a look. Yeah, we're not looking for a polish. We're not. But but but, but this. I'm almost polished. Get her off. And let the blade sit for a bit and coffee while I go back to working. Hey Ben, what you doing? I'm I'm machining. These machines for metal. Well, yeah, but how can you possibly? This is how cavemen started fire. <laughs> Once I've assembled the blade to the handle, it's time for some final touches. Now that was a process. A knife has been made. And now for the final test. It cuts! Success! Now, is it the prettiest knife in the world? No. Is it my first knife? Yes. Did I do a summer forge camp with my best friend? Absolutely. I learned a ton about metals and grinding and hammering and grinding, but I got to hang out with my best friend and that is going to be something that I'm going to cherish for the rest of my life. And Dave, I really want to thank you for that because I needed that break. 
This is truly special. So, to Dave. Dude, thank you so much. This is so don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and leave comments down below. Both Dave and I will make sure to answer anything that you have. Um, I also want to do a little call out to any of the knife makers out there. I'm not sure if any of them are going to see this, but Dave might be an amateur, but he's come up with a pretty unique way of making a knife that I haven't seen anywhere. And I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And I think a lot of other guys a lot of other forges out there need to start making some knives this way because, well, who doesn't like a 3D printer and then being able to integrate it into a knife? It's pretty cool stuff.